Hey guys, welcome to Tech Amp's first gaming segment, Humble Pie. In this segment, we look at the current Humble Bundle that's out for offer. And if you're not familiar with Humble Bundle, which I'm sure many of you are, it's a great site where you can go and pick up a bunch of great games that are generally indies, but not always, uh, for whatever price you want. And if you beat the average, you usually get a few more games. Uh, and you get to support charity while you're doing it. So, uh, this one is the PC and Android 11 bundle. So that means that you can also get them on Android. All the games have Android ports. And there's a great app that they offer, the Humble app, Humble Bundle app, that downloads, installs, and updates all the games for you when you run it. So that's fantastic. Uh, it supports charities uh, like the Electronic Frontier Foundation, uh, Child's Play, and uh, I think that's it for this one, but a lot of time they have more of them. Uh, and all of these games have Steam keys, so it's easy to keep track of them on PC as well, as well as have them in uh, your Steam library, which is important to a lot of us, including me. I love having that. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to go through all of these games. Uh, I'm going to play them blindly. It's going to be about 10 minutes with each game. Uh, and just overview them, give them a quick little overview, get them a bit of uh, exposure out there, and hopefully you guys will have a better idea of what these games are like and maybe have some fun watching the videos too. But uh, without further ado, let's get into it, and we'll start with Thomas Was Alone. All right, so Thomas was alone. So uh, this is the only game in this bundle that I had owned before uh, pr from a previous indie bundle, and uh, and I've I've played it a little bit, but I haven't played it too much. But from what I have played it, it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, not necessarily graphically, because as you'll see in a moment, uh, it's very basic graphically. Uh, so we'll go on and look at that. We'll look at settings first of all. Uh, it should be noted there is no mouse control in this menu, but uh, it's a bit annoying, but uh, not that important on something like this. Uh, graphical quality, I think it, with these options, it seems like it probably runs in uh, Unity just by the names of the options. Let's see. Yeah, so. Volume sliders, stuff like that, that's nice. Uh, never turn this voiceover volume down, because the voiceover is probably the best part of this game, uh, and, and really tells the story, so, let's start a new game. So I'm probably not going to be talking too much in this uh, in this video, just because I want you guys to hear the narration, uh, because it's just so good. So Thomas just decided to start listing his observations for posterity. So just basic One, left. The oh, whole sure. alone thing. Two portals. They led somewhere. He'd yet to work out where. Three. Falling. Thomas was absolutely fantastic at falling. He was almost as good at falling as he was at observing. <laughs> and there, as you can see, what uh, my point there with the narration. Uh, just basic left and right controls so far. Okay, interesting. Thomas couldn't fall past this block. Think, damn it, think. What if there was some kind of inverted fall? Some way to. What's the word? Jump. Okay, so let's inverted fall over this. It worked! Thomas had solved the great inverted fall mystery. Uh, inverted fall all the way up those stairs. A big jump. But Thomas noted there was no real danger in missing it. The world didn't want him to fail here. It was pushing him, but gently. 
Let's see if we can get up here. Okay. No. Oh, it's a long jump. There we go. Now we're pros at inverted falling. This all seemed a little dangerous. I want that the thing. world was not to be trusted. It was unstable, and it seemed to Thomas that it could let him down at any moment. He was starting to suspect. Oh. I didn't mean to press skip there. There was some narration. This all seemed a little dangerous. Oh, the world goodness. was not to be trusted. It was unstable, and it seemed to Thomas that it could let him down at any moment. I love the lighting he effects was to suspect here. It might even be doing so on purpose. Nah, paranoia. Thomas wondered whether the portals were actually taking him anywhere. He felt like he was making progress, but there wasn't really any way to know. He seemed to be moving predominantly up and to the right, which might all might not be important. <laughs> Up and to the right. That's how it always is, isn't it? It might have been paranoia again, but Thomas could have sworn the world was becoming more complicated. It always seemed to be one step ahead of his skills. It had been designed just for him. He wondered why. Was the world testing him? So as you can already tell, this is sort of a, like, psychoanalysis going on with these little, little blocks. Pretty striking, I, I really like this game. Something about the boiling, toxic, glowing water intimidated Thomas. He didn't like it. He certainly didn't want to swim in it. He made another what those things note. are. Or water. I don't remember that. Not good. To be avoided. Oh, respawn points, okay. Oh, well, there we go. Didn't even mean to do that, but all right. That's a demonstration of respawn points. The loneliness was getting to Thomas. No amount of observation or obsessive note-taking could combat that. Oh, shoot, come on. smarter. There was the mental list to consider. Over the minutes and seconds since his spontaneous generation, he'd become a pretty skilled jumper. He was evolving. He just wished he had someone to share it with. It's really a lot to think about with the, the narration and the storytelling in this game. It's almost sort of a commentary on games themselves, you know, learning the, the skills throughout it and things. Alright, so here we have another character, uh, another block that we get to control with different skills and, uh, and things. Chris took an immediate and deep dislike to the skinny red rectangle. Who the hell did this Thomas think he was? Oh yeah, okay. I remember this guy. He's very salty and sort of jealous of Thomas. Uh, and he has to help him out a lot, Thomas does. But uh, they work it out together. Chris had been doing fine. He wasn't the highest jumper, but he'd held his own. He'd even been graceful at times. Well, not actually. Not technically graceful. Probably the wrong word, but you know, fine. <laughs> there was that skinny little runt leaping about like he owned the place. He has sort of this crass, like, old, uh, salty British man uh, personality. 
But of course he's just a block, uh, which makes it all the more fun, really. But you find out later that since he's smaller, he can get through little spaces, which helps the rest of the team out. So, there we go. So we helped each other out there. Oh, here we go. Yeah. This is where Chris learns his skill. This was more like it. A glowy white thing. Only Chris could get to it. Which, of course, made it all the more enticing. What would it do? What new opportunity might this switch open up to him? Great, great. Another chance for Thomas to jump slightly <laughs> higher than Chris. Fortunate. Seriously. This made the whole switch pressing thing entirely worthwhile. Yeah, so you get to uh, to use the other characters and their skills to help out. Both of them get to their respective portals. Because on the surface, it did not seem good. Chris was pretty scared. Little Red seemed fine, happy to be on his merry little adventure. <laughs> Chris couldn't shake the feeling that things had taken a significant turn for the worse since Thomas had joined them. Sure, he'd been able to piggyback his way to ever so slightly higher platforms, but where had that got him? Well, to ever so slightly higher platforms, which was sort of his point. <laughs> yeah, but the really the commentary is the best part of this game, including. Well, also the music. I'll just let you have a listen to it while the narrator's not talking here. The music is absolutely fantastic. Sort of a orchestral chiptune kind of thing. And it's, it's really, really nice. Really soothing and relaxing. Chris stared at Thomas with pure hatred. He seemed so very happy at their situation. Friends together, a brave... Fellowship of quadrilaterals on a quest for greatness. Ah, oh, shoot. But it was all the obvious observation that Thomas was doing which grated. Every time they saw something vaguely new, Chris would hear a satisfied little hmm from the vaulting idiot. <laughs> he hoped the next portal would split them up. If only for a few levels. But just even even uh, showing this this gameplay and recording this video makes me really want to play through this game. Uh, like I said, I only played it for a little bit, uh, and I'm really not sure why I put it down replaying it. It's just so fun and lighthearted. I don't know if it stays that way. It may, you know, have some sort of dark, like, uh, existential part in it. Uh, I'm not sure of that, but... Uh, so far it's just just fun and great design the platforming feels really solid uh, you can use uh, either just keyboard or you can also use um, a 360 pad I'm not sure if you can use uh, other controllers or not but I'm sure if not officially supported you can mod them in somehow John knew he knew that this was his chance a moment to shine this was game day. So this is another new one. He's really tall. I can't remember if uh, if he's good at jumping or what what his skill is. We'll find out here in a sec. We're approaching the ten minute mark, but I think this gives you a pretty good idea of uh, what the game is about. Exceptional skills. As it was, he was. Trapped on the wrong side of these little dot things. Ah, so sometimes you can get in the way, I guess. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Oh, I think he can float, maybe. Maybe he can float in that. Nope, can't float. <laughs> Let's see. 
That must be, I guess, that button press. Yeah, he's great at jumping, I guess. Put his training to use time to show those little dots how it was done. John decided to press the switch to let the little dots catch up with him. John cared for his new allies. You could tell from the sympathetic expression practiced in the mirror all these years. <laughs> I love how just just the narration can give you such a a great idea of what what these little blocks are about and yeah I mean at the heart of it that sort of again has a uh, a, a greater um, you know uh, commentary on gaming as a whole because at the end of the day you're looking at pixels but I mean how many times have you had uh, times in gaming where you've just really felt for the characters really connected with characters you know whether it be RPGs or uh, you know action games like The Last of Us or something like that uh, where you know you're really invested in these characters but at the end of the day they're just pixels uh, you know a little bit more detailed than Thomas was alone of course but uh, you know it, it's sort of a commentary on that I think uh, so, yeah, we'll finish up this level, and I think that's probably good for Thomas Was Alone. Um, great, just fantastic game, and honestly, it, it, it's probably worth picking up the bundle just for this game if you haven't picked it up before. Uh, really, really great little uh, platformer with something that you might not expect. Uh, you know, that really great commentary uh, and narration. So, yeah, consider it. I meant to get him over here. Dang it. Let's try this again. Oh, no, we need John, I guess. <laughs> Alright. This took a little bit longer than I expected. That's alright. There we go. And Chris, Chris doesn't even need to jump that high. He can just go through there. He doesn't need to vault around. There we go. Alright, so that's Thomas was alone.